Hi everyone, my name is Akash and I welcome you all to this channel. So friends, I hope that you remember the video which I shared few weeks back on front-end system design in which I have shared that question that in which I was asked to design the LRU cache. So friends, these are the questions which, which were asked to me in that particular interview only in the later rounds. So these are the questions that I'm going to share with you all today. And friends, if you have not yet watched that LRU cache system design video, then do watch that video also. I will share the link in the description box. And friends, I've also made the also made other videos as well on front end interviews in which I had the front end interview with companies like Airtel, Baiju's and Make My Trip. So I will drop those links as well in the description box. Do watch these videos as well. And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, then please go ahead and subscribe. So let's move ahead. Let's have a look at the first question. What are the different ways to create objects in JavaScript? So number one, with the help of object constructor. Number two, with the help of objects create method. Number three, object literal syntax. Number four, with the help of function constructor. And number five is ES6 class syntax. So the next question that I have is, what is the difference between call, apply and bind? So how you can answer this question is that call, apply and bind are used for method borrowing and call simply invokes the function with the given context value. Uh, let's suppose the given this, uh, like let's suppose what the this should be pointing to. So the given object or the given context you can say with the arguments provided one by one. You can also show the example as well. For apply what you can say that it also invokes the given function with the given this value or the given context and in this the arguments are passed as an array for example for the bind what you can say is bind simply returns us a new function and that new function can be uh, we can pass the arguments to that new function let's have a look at another question so this question was what is the difference between slice and splice so how we can answer this is like slice it does not mutate it does not mutate the original array but splice it mutates the original array okay slice what it does is it simply returns as the subset okay subset uh, that is the selected portion of the array and what splice does is it it provides us the deleted element okay slice is used to pick the elements from the array whereas splice is used to perform the operation like insert or delete on the array cool so friends the next question that i have is what do you understand by prototype chaining so how you can answer this is that prototype chaining is basically used to build new objects on the basis of existing ones and you can also do some coding like you can tell the interviewer like you can simply create an object like this and what you can tell him is like you can show that this is the property name property is actually there on uh, on object but when you try to access other properties let's suppose when we try to look when we try to have a look, we get these properties as well, like to string, okay, is prototype of value of. So how this particular OBJ is getting these access to these properties as well. So the prototype property is like the, this particular object has access to the prototype property with the help of this underscore underscore proto object, okay. And you can console it also. So this is the proto object and all those value of two string are available inside this underscore underscore proto. Okay. You can also show like in case of constructors like array, this property can be accessible using prototype. So when we console it, log it. So these are the values like concat, push, fill filters. These are available inside this array constructor using this prototype keyword cool you can also show like when we do this object dot underscore underscore proto and when we do object this constructor dot prototype and what you will notice is this this particular object and this particular object are similar cool and when you try to do is object dot proto dot underscore underscore proto it gives you null Okay, so what you can do is you can try to like, you can try to do some coding and you can try to explain your answer to the interviewer. 
okay like when you do object dot underscore underscore proto you get this particular object and when you try to find the prototype property of this particular object you get null so you can make the interviewer understand in this particular way okay and and yes you can also say that prototypal chaining means to make to build new objects on the basis of existing ones so friends the another question was what is first class function in javascript so every function in javascript is first class function which means that we can pass the function as argument in another function the function can be returned from another function and the function can also be assigned to a variable you can also provide several examples to justify your answer so friends another question was what do you mean by higher order functions so higher order functions means it is simply a function that take another function as a an argument and returns back the function by simply performing some operations or modifying it uh, we, as you all know in react also we have higher order component hoc so higher order component is also a function that takes in a component and modifies it and returns back the modified component so you can answer it in this way and you can also justify your answer by providing an example so friends another question was how do you redeclare a variable in switch block without any error without any syntax error for redeclaration for example this particular piece of code will give you syntax error for redeclaration let's fix it now friends this particular piece of code will not give you any syntax error because what we have done is we have simply created a nested block for the case statement and what it will do is it will simply create a block scoped lexical environment so it won't be giving any syntax error for redeclaration so the next question that was asked to me was what do you understand by temporal dead zone so friends what you can say is that in javascript the variables that are declared using let and const are not uh, will give us reference error if we try to access them before their declaration but it is not the same case with where in where we can access them basically okay it won't be giving us reference error it will give us undefined so what you can say is temporal dead zone is that particular time okay in which we are not able to access these particular variables that are declared using let and const so friends the next question was what do you understand by memoization so friends what you can say is that memoization helps us to increase the performance of our function with the help of memoization what we are going to do is we are going to check our function is going to check if the input that we are getting are same then we are going to cache that particular result for the given input if we are getting the same input and we are not going to compute it again and again what we are going to do is we are simply going to return back the cached result and we are not going to do it do it always we only need to do it when the computation is taking extra time or extra space or it is costly then only what we are going to do is we are going to memoize it basically we are going to store it in the cache basically we are going to store it like somewhere and we are going to we are not going to recompute it for the same provided input we are simply going to return back the stored result let's have a look at the example so let's first create a function that we are going to memoize so friends let's say this multiply by 2 function is a costly function it is taking too much time okay now let's make a memoize function so friends our memoize function will have a cache like this and it will simply be calling this particular function multiply by 2 so friends memoize function will check basically that this particular num number that we have to multiply by 2 if this particular input is same or not to the previous one so friends what we have done over here is we simply check that if this particular number input is already present in our cache then we are going to simply return from the cache we are not going to perform this costly computation okay let's simply comment it 
and else if it is already present okay so if it is already present we are going to simply return it from cache a but if it is not present then what we are going to do then we are going to compute it and then we are going to basically return back that particular computation so let's have a look if it works or not So over here, what you can see is first time it has consoled without memoization and then with memoization. It means that friends, it means that first time the code was code has reached over here. It means the first time the costly computation was performed and it returned back the result from here, not from cache. And the second time the code has executed and it came into this if block and the value was returned from this particular block from the cache okay so this you can provide this particular example for the memoization so friend the next question that i remember is what do you understand by closure and its scope chains so for this what you can say is that a closure is a combination of a function and the lexical environment in that particular function was declared co combined together is a closure and you can also give an example is that uh, you can also provide a function and inside that function another function and you can say that this particular inner function has the access to the scope of the outer function variables also and you can also say the scope chains are basically it has three scope chains one is its own scope chain the functions inner function scope chain another is access to the outer function scope and third will be global access okay so this will be the answer to this particular question so friends, uh, this video will get a little more longer. So in order to prevent that, what I will be doing, I will be sharing another questions. I have also like five to six questions more in which we have some of the React questions and some of the DSA questions. So I'll be sharing that in part two. So I hope you have learned something new in this particular video. And if yes, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.